Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? And welcome back to the channel, the first video of 2018. And what better way to start it than celebrating my parents' 34th anniversary, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for the people who brought me into this world. <laughs> anyway, so I want to bring you guys in to actually talk about 34 years of ups and downs of marriage. But as always, we want to start from the beginning. What was y'all's perspective individually? And then how did y'all cross paths? That's and a lot of videos. A lot of videos. For 34 years. For 34 years, you're right. Yeah. What I want to get from this, inshallah, for the audience to benefit from is the lessons that y'all learned, the mindset that y'all were in when y'all were going into marriages. We know nowadays it's uh, become very difficult for people to get married. There's a lot of obstacles, even though Islam made marriage very simple. People have made it very hard, right, through cultural practices, uh, always getting in the way, not living up to certain expectations because of cultural practices that are normalized, etc. So my first question is, what was y'all's mindset when y'all were getting into this thing, this institution of marriage? Well, it's uh, freedom and freedom. <laughs> and let's keep it that way. <laughs> Great. No, no, no. <laughs> well, um, I think there's, there's a lot of elements into marriage. It's not like you know one thing mm -hmm. you have to look at. I think the first thing you have to look at, and the first thing that I have like you know uh, uh, looked at, uh, or at myself when I'm like when I want to get married, for example, like ask the question: um, Are you ready? And you say, how can you be ready for marriage? Are you talking about, uh, like, you know, uh, money-wise, professional-wise, like, you know, being ready? I think number one item in the list, I believe it's the self-discipline. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, how much do you really believe in this institution? How much do you know about marriage? Mm -hmm. See, the Qur'an talked about marriage in so many places, about the prophets, about the people, about, like, there's a whole, the whole chapter in the Qur'an is about women. There's a whole chapter uh, in the Qur'an about, uh, you know, uh, marriage, you know, in Mujadala, for example, you know, the, the surah. So, um, it, it teaches you a lot about marriage. It's not like, you know, something that you discover. You have to learn. And, and self-discipline is, I would say, number one, to ask yourself if you are ready and you go from there. Do you think a lot of people get caught up, though, on being ready? I'm not, I feel like I'm ready, but then when I actually start getting into the process, I start uh, getting scared, uh, cold feet, right? Like, I thought I knew, but now it's a curveball right yeah because you're you're coming into it as you know first time mm -hmm. so you don't have any role model except your own family mm -hmm. so you look up to your own parents and say you know what kind of marriage do they have and so it is uh sometimes you might say yeah i want to be like my parents sometimes mm -hmm. you say no i don't want to do this in mm -hmm. my parent marriage i don't want my marriage to be that way mm-hmm uh, looking back at the time that I got married, you know, um, it was, we were very young. Mm -hmm. I was almost 21. Mm -hmm. So uh, at that time, what were you thinking? What is your, you know, time uh, in, in your, in your, at that age? Mm -hmm. uh, I was in college, uh, but I knew that, you know, I was just a few years in America. It was a mission for me because a person by themselves, they can't do much, mm -hmm. right? You know, and, and you have to be married. You have to have that foundation. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a foundation between the man and the woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it, it is the basis. It is the it's the cornerstone. It's the cornerstone of a society. Yes. Right? So, well, the, the, so, the, the thing is, you say... Um, before you get married, before you even like you think about marriage, mm -hmm. like I'm asking myself, when I decided like I want to get married, I was in college and it was really tough at that time, but I felt like 
there's so much pressure mm-hmm. around me that I think I need to have a partner. I need to have a person, you know, that can, you know, help me out mm-hmm. with this process. It's not like, you know, I'm living by myself here, right? So I decided, I said, okay, I want to get married. What does it take, mm-hmm. you know, uh, to get married? What do you look at? What do you look for? You right. Know, mm-hmm. What do you look for when you, when you want to get married? And that's why I said uh, knowledge is, is extremely important to understand, ma- you know, marriage. And we were coming from a foundation from Islam, you know, from Islam point of view. Right. It's not the culture only. Mm-hmm. Right. So I looked at it and I said, whom I need to marry? What are the like, you know, the, 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 the characteristics of that person? The person, the, the personality, the qualifications, mm-hmm. right. you know, you that this person for. has what you're looking for. Exactly. Right. Okay. Am I ready when you say am I ready uh, like emotionally, mm-hmm. uh, socially, you know, uh, as a young person in college? And I don't know if people will at that time, like, you know, will, will marry me because mm-hmm. I'm still in college. But I felt like. I need, you know, a partner. I need someone to be with me in, in, in my life. Right. And, and so it's a life yeah. journey. It's a, you, you know that you're looking for things. You're looking into not just now. It's nothing that you're, let's try it out and see. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, there's always a outlet, you know. Do you think? You, you think about the future. This is the person I'm going to be with for the rest of my life. Right. I'm going to have children with, God willing, you know, mm-hmm. inshallah. Right. And um, this is, we're going to build a home together. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be, um, you know, there's going to, you got to face reality. There's going to be mm-hmm. ups and downs. Mm-hmm. You're going to tough it out. Mm-hmm. You're going to bear it. You're going to be patient. You're going to be days that are happy, days that are sad, right. days are that... Um, you know, uh, frustrating days. Angry. There. Yes. All mm-hmm. kinds of. <laughs> so you're sharing. When we say life, time, partner, it's a commitment. It's a commitment. Say, you know, so, so that actually brings me to another point, actually. Um, we know in our culture, right, uh, there's uh, the, the boyfriend girlfriend phase, right? I just I want to try it out to be in a relationship and then. Um, try to get my way with things, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how do you avoid getting into that mindset? How do you avoid uh, having that kind of expectation when going into marriage? How do you uh, just skip around that? And is it a, a form of maturity that, no, when I'm looking for somebody, I want to be with them for the rest of my life. It's not just a temporary thing. It's not just a phase that, oh, I just want to see this person, what they're like, if they're good, then okay, great. If not, then, you know, ma'asalama, I'm out, kind of thing, right? Uh, do you think a lot of people jump into that with that kind of mindset, that they just want to try it? Well, as I said before, uh, that, that marriage is a, an institution. Mm-hmm. And to get into it, you have to understand what is it about, mm-hmm. what are the challenges that facing you. Mm-hmm. And I think at our time, uh, people were more mature, uh, in the young age than now. I mean, I was like reading in, in the USA today mm-hmm. uh, something about like, you know, people were matured at 18 and 19 or 20 right. back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Now they're like moving to the 25, 26, 27. So it's just there. like earlier times, maybe. Mm-hmm. Be- also, people got married younger. Uh, people are uh, mature yeah. younger and they were able to lead. Mm-hmm. They were leaders of even armies, you know, mm-hmm. back in the time. And uh, I don't know, there, there's just m- more distractions or more things that uh, the young people are into mm-hmm. that they don't really, uh, and there's so many availabilities of things and resources mm-hmm. that they don't really um, appreciate. So they take advantage, of, they take things for granted and mm-hmm. they do not appreciate. They don't work hard for something, they, don't they just work expect hard. it to, uh, to just look, come. They don't take jobs earlier. So learning the, so the that, life skills of responsibility and yes, taking Yes, even, even like as simple as things that to manage in the household, mm-hmm. stuff, to keep your mindset that this has to be done, this has to be done. Just, you know, daily things, daily chores and then... 
uh, as the child grows up, you know, what do, what do they start wanting and needing a car? Do they maintain the car? Do they take care? Mm-hmm. Do they keep a job? Do they listen? No, you know, how so to be So basically over the course, or the, over the course of them maturing and growing up through like, you know, adolescence, etc., like, you know, to adulthood, that's the time when you start giving responsibility to the kids, I guess, in your family to, mm-hmm. uh, to, to grow and mature and, and fill in those roles so oh. that they have those life skills. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said he called, he called the, that kind of, you know, the contract mm-hmm. that, 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 you know, when you get married, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it mithaqan ghalidha. Mithaqan ghalidha is a very... Uh, now, ghalidha means, you know, like thick, but it means also is very strong heavy covenant, bond, very yeah. heavy bond. Mm-hmm. And marriage is the only contract that mentioned in the Quran that it is a heavy bond. Meaning that, that you, you know, I mean, you cannot just try, you say, try things. Mm-hmm. Okay? You have to really like, you know. It's not a business transaction, let's say, mm-hmm. that it partnership and something you know, it doesn't work out, You let's just, no, you try to keep it. Mm-hmm. You try your best to keep it. This is two people. It's mm-hmm. not two, something that can just, you know, a car you bring and you take out mm-hmm. or property or some sort of yeah. something. I mean, like dealing. nowadays, nowadays we hear people like, you know, get married and like they're divorced in six months, one year. And you ask, mm-hmm. why this happened? And it's like so, it is so silly. Right. Because yeah. they could not handle reality. No, handle each other. Like you know, oh, even for people. silly for silly reasons, become so easy mm-hmm. to get out of it. Right. You know, mm-hmm. before like we were thinking that if you want to get into marriage, this is something sacred. Mm-hmm. And I know you know people get divorced for some reason. As a as right? a last resort, it's it's there in Islam to get divorced as a last resort. But before because that, they, it's, they just really you have to keep trying to right. to and that's keep why it I said that's why I said it is important for mm-hmm. people to study, mm-hmm. to learn and to understand. You know, knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala have told us in the Quran in so many places you know, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are they equal, those who know, and those who don't know? If you don't know, you have to study. I mean, look, mm-hmm. I'm an engineer. If I don't know what I'm doing in my job, I'll be laid off. Mm-hmm. They will kick me out of the company. Because I don't know what I'm... I have to study the manuals. I have to read. We have a manual. We have the book. We can read it. We can understand it. And then act upon it. That's why I said it's important first, the self-discipline. That you ask yourself. This is not a joke. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, when you go and marry somebody, that's not a joke. It, this is not a joke. It's not a fling. Uh, Rasulullah said, Salaam. you know, that, that uh, ثلاثٌ جدهن جد وهزلهن جد. So three, three things that they are, uh, the serious of it is, is serious and the joke of it is serious. Meaning that there is no joke about one of them is marriage. Mm-hmm. And marriage is a very sacred uh, institution that we need to keep it. And grow it, and and you know um, uh, flourish and flourish with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But that's why I said the first step is actually look at yourself. You already you understand what you're getting into. This is not a matter of trying Playing try games. And, yeah try and because uh, there's a lot of emotional uh, involvement as well, right? You you, right. you you're you're emotionally invested in a person. You want to get to know them. You want to please them. You want to make them happy right. uh, to your best ability. But then when they dump you, right, you're broken. And for sometimes long periods of time for you to get over that person, right? Which then leads me to my next point. When you're looking for somebody, right, in a prospect of marriage, what are the things that you look for? What did I look for? What did you look for? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, look, again, we go back again from uh, the foundation, you know, that I was raised with. And I know maybe a lot of people were not so lucky, I would say like me, that I was raised in a very religious house. Mm-hmm. You know, my father was like, a, you know, a, a PhD in Sharia and, and he was a scholar. He was mm-hmm. a, an imam. He was a khatib. And, and he was transparent with us with the knowledge that he had. Mm-hmm. He did not, you know, like keep it away from us. You know, I, I've seen that even in my, my family's life. Uh, 
the most important thing that when he when I know this hadith, like you know, that that woman is married for four reasons. Beauty. He said he said to Hamaratu li Arba. Right. Okay, women are being married because of four things, and there's no fifth thing, there's no five, there's no six, and seven, mm -hmm. it's four beauty, uh, money, uh, lineage, and deen. Mm -hmm. And you know, he put the deen in the end because a lot of people look for the first three, mm -hmm. and the deen is like the last thing who cares, you know, if she prays or not, she's hijabi or not, she's mm -hmm. you know, that comes later. But if she's a beautiful man, I need that woman, I would like to marry this girl, mm -hmm. right. Or like, you know, uh, money. If she is wealthy, she has money. Or, you know, and of course, she is the daughter of so-and-so. She's like, you know. Her nobility, her status right. in society. And, 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 and these three things, I believe that these three things are going to go away one day. Beauty after 40 years, after 50. Beauty is there, but what? But 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 the beauty. That's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, mm. when He talked about no, so this is a serious matter. I know, really. I know, I know. You know, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala spoke about, you know, about marriage, He said, "وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إلَيْهَا." You know, from His one of His signs that He created a partner from you, so you will have, you will dwell in it. The word second means. To be to be comfortable, like it's like a house, exactly. right? Now I don't, don't want to make it long, yeah. but you know. And he said, then he said, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً. He said, and he have between you, love and, and mercy. Mercy. Right. See, one of the scholars said that said after so many years in marriage, sometimes love, I would say maybe fade away, which I don't believe. You know, I don't believe in that. I believe today I love my wife, and I'm saying this. You know, uh, and I, I'm not ashamed of that. Right. The Prophet Sallallahu said it before me. When they asked him, they said, who is the most one beloved to you? Amr ibn al-As asked him, he said, you know, he wanted to make sure that maybe he is one of them. He said, who's the most one beloved to you? He said, uh, uh, my wife, Aisha. So he said, okay, from the men, not from women. He said, her father, Abu Bakr. Mm -hmm. And then Umar. And, but, but he started with his wife. He died in the lap of his wife, Aisha mm -hmm. anha. So, beauty is going to go away, meaning that, you know, when you are 20, you're not like 60, mm -hmm. right? But Allah said, after that, He said, uh, love, mawadda, and mawadda is more than just love. You know, I mean, I can, I can go on and on with this, but I mean, there's no time. I know. Mawaddatan wa rahma, and then He said mercy. Now, why is there mercy? Because... The Prophet Sallallahu said also, and this is for, for people to know. The Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith, he said, لا تزوجوا ابنتكم إلا لتقي He said, do not marry your daughter mm -hmm. except for those who are righteous. إذا أحبها أكرمها And if, if he loves her, he will be so generous with her. He will honor her. وَإِنْ mm كَرِهَها -hmm. And if he hates her, لم يظلمها he will never oppress her. Right. He will not never take her rights. Like we hear nowadays, you know, people are all these, you know, tabloid uh, right. news. Uh, you know, he said, oh, she did this, he, he did that. This, this sacred life mm -hmm. is now in the open. Right. You know, Their private no, life is exposed right. and exploited. Right. Yeah. So if, if I, I was looking for something, I asked, I said, is she like, you know, a, a good Muslimah? Mm -hmm. She like you know, wearing hijab? Is she like, you know, uh, active in the community? The, uh, like, you know, I mean, this is important for me. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, and people say, oh, you don't want a beautiful. Of course, I want someone beautiful. You know, of course, Outward I want someone. And inward. Yes, I want someone who can understand, you know, the culture. And like, you know, um, she worked. I worked. We both were working. You know, we both did a lot of, you know, things working and, 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 and being active in the community. This is what I looked for. Mm -hmm. I didn't care much really. I mean, deen for me, like religion for me, was, was number one. Because look, if anything goes away, if a beauty is going to go away, money is going to go away, uh, lineage is going to go away. I mean, literally, when I got married, actually, later I found out that she is an Amira. And uh, like it's like it's a, it's a you know a princess, a princess. Mm -hmm. yeah royalty right. yeah and royalty. She had that royalty I yeah. didn't even tell him he found out from someone yeah later alhamdulillah it's like mm -hmm. you know oh you married me because I was a princess 
But what I'm saying is, right. Deen, religion, Islam, way of life, being it's active, knowing the rights and duties, and how to make you know what Islam gives us is guidelines to be happy. Mm-hmm. If you follow that, really, you to to prolong the marriage to. You know, have stability there, mm-hmm. and just like there's guidance to or hadith for the men, what to look for. There's also this for the women. For example, you say, If someone comes to you and you are pleased with his, the way that he, you know, his religion, his way of The way he carries himself, etc. Uh, so the hadith wasn't only was, for women, Yani. Right. For, uh, for men too. For, for women, <laughs> how, you know, you need guidance, what to look for. Right. How mm-hmm. do you find, how do you know? Mm-hmm. No matter how much you sit down and also, you know, you ask people. And from the experiences of people, they tell you, no matter how much you sit down and talk and mm-hmm. uh, spend time together and go and, and you ask others about, you mm-hmm. will never know the person until you live with them. Mm-hmm. So what is the important thing that you are you know, getting into mm-hmm. if you don't know this person? So how did you know that I'm but, a good person? <laughs> uh, and then you pray and you make istikhara. <laughs> you ask about, uh, you know, he gives, he gives his references, but right. you know, Allah exactly. knows. Allah exactly. knows, you know, you, you, uh, he might give references only to those that will speak good about him. Mm-hmm. Who lived with him? Who traveled with him? Who, who really knows him? Mm-hmm. You know, there's all sorts of um, uh, things that, that people just are uh, known yeah. that they say, oh, if somebody's seeking marriage, they will will make themselves like angels or something. Right. And then things will start to come out. But how do we know the core person? Mm-hmm. And how, you know, uh, who, who really can advise? So it could be somebody that you know, mm-hmm. some uh, a family that you uh, always visited and grew up with or, mm-hmm. or, you know, go out with and stuff. And then the subject of marriage comes, mm-hmm. or it could be somebody from, you know, from another state, from another country, from another, and they just, you know, seeking. So how do you know? Really, also, mm-hmm. the gut feeling, the prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows, right? it's tihara. It's very important. But you have to do your homework. Like Jamal Badawi said one time, we don't just say, you know, it's tihara. You have to do your homework too. Mm-hmm. Consult with uh, your parents. Consult with others. Right. Ask about who, uh, you know, right. the person. And also you could tell a lot of things from the person. You could, you could mm-hmm. kind of, you know, have that um, What if it's deceptive though? What if it's a, a facade? It's a, it's a mask uh, that they appear to be... And they have all the references. That's to show, when istikhara comes in. You know, Allah does not harm you. Right. So you will have Allah will prevent it. Mm-hmm. Somehow there would be, you know, you'd be so close to something, mm-hmm. and then Allah will prevent it from happening because you turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mm-hmm. for this future in your life, a very important step in your life. Mm-hmm. So uh, that brings me to my, my my next question. Actually, what? I mean, you kept saying, educate yourself, reference. Besides the Qur'an, right, what did y'all look into, I guess, as reference to when you're going into marriage? Or how did you educate yourself? What did, what did you reference on how you should become when you're getting ready for marriage? Okay. 